Should political parties be funded by the state? And if so, how much? Should all parties benefit from public funding? These and other related questions are specifically important in a time when liberal democracy is under attack, support for mainstream political parties is in continuous decline, and economic and financial resources are scarce. Public funding has been traditionally criticized for increasing the level of corruption, generate distrust among the citizenship, and last but not least, encourage the cartelization of party politics. The idea is that political parties financially fed with public money will come together to protect their own interests, disregard voters' preference and milk the state. However, as my dear colleague Tim Houghton, professor at the University of Birmingham, likes to say, one should not forget that money is like the fuel for the engines of party politics. Fuel does not determine which car is faster or who will win the race, but at high speeds, Cars need plenty of fuel, and vehicles need access to refueling stations during a long race. Trying to answer the question, are state subsidies to political parties a blessing or a curse? Academic research has shown that properly regulated, public funding cannot only assist political parties to become more responsive and institutionalized, but also help party systems to become more stable over time with the positive impact this will have for the functioning of democracy in a country, on top of helping to combat both electoral polarization and political corruption. But let's see each of these benefits in turn. State subsidies not only help political parties to build strong organizations by increasing their professionalization, allowing them to span geographically and nationalize, or maintain systematized procedures of conflict resolution, of candidate selection, leadership selection, etc., but it also help parties to survive and endure difficult times, for example, when left outside Parliament. This is especially so for newly created political formations and for parties that, having obtained a relevant degree of electoral support, do not manage to get into Parliament. State subsidies to political parties have also been seen to avoid the excessive fragmentation of the party system, make voters' partisan choices less volatile over time, and foster predictable partisan interactions, consequently avoiding shocking parliamentary turnovers and keeping the balance of power among political parties. By encouraging parties to seek the moderate voter, public funding also helps to reduce polarization. Reducing politicians' reliance on private money, usually linked to more self-interested and stream ideological positions, State subsidies encourage parties to defend the general interest by competing for the median, more ideological center and moderate voter. Such beneficial outcome will be higher the more parties have access to public financial help. On the other hand, and due to its transparent character, public funding helps to reduce corruption, because public money can be controlled in an easier, more accurate and transparent manner, state subsidies can discourage citizens from bribing politicians, while at the same time increasing their social condemnation when being caught red-handed. Public funding helps parties to be more responsive. In particular, public funding tends to reduce the distance between parties and their voters, to the extent that the higher the percentage of state subsidies parties get, the more responsive and effective parties will become. State subsidies can also help to promote the participation in politics of minority groups by earmarking a percentage of the state subsidies allocated to political parties, awarding parties with extra funds or sanctioning them with the total or partial loss of public funding. State subsidies have also been seen as a way to promote the participation of women, youth, persons with disabilities and other minorities in political life. This is not to say, however, that political parties should be publicly funded in its entirety, to the point that parties' excessive financial reliance on state subsidies has also been shown to be counterproductive. For this reason, a reasonably party-funded regime should aim to achieve a balance between private and public sources, making the latter, by all means, available preferably on the basis of a combination of absolute equality and equitability that is proportionate to electoral support, to all those parties that, even outside Parliament, enjoy a minimum level of citizen support, 
that is, the payout threshold, should always be lower than the electoral one. Public funding of political parties should be seen as a tool to help them to play their essential role in democracy by reducing as much as possible any undue influence by private donors, increasing the political representation of social minorities and creating a level playing field among socially rooted and organizationally strong political parties. My name is Fernando Casalberto and I am Associate Professor at the University of Nottingham and member of OECODIR core group of political party experts.